This is Point of Inquiry for Friday, April 13th, 2007. Welcome to Point of Inquiry. I'm DJ Grothy. Point of Inquiry is the radio show and the podcast of the Center for Inquiry, a think tank collaborating with the State University of New York at Buffalo on the new science and the public master's degree. CFI also maintains branches in Manhattan, Tampa, Hollywood, Washington, D.C., Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and Indianapolis, Indiana, in addition to 14 other cities around the world. Every week on this show, we look at some of the big questions through the lens of scientific naturalism, focusing mostly on the paranormal, alternative medicine, and secularism and religion. Before we get to this week's guest, a public spokesperson for science and critical thinking skepticism, Phil Plate, he's called the bad astronomer, here is a word from this episode's sponsor. Hi, I'm Barry Carr, Executive Director of PSYCOP here at the Center for Inquiry. We're celebrating our 30th anniversary this year, making the world safe for science and skepticism and dealing with fringe science and paranormal claims. We publish what I think is an essential magazine, The Skeptical Inquirer. This is the magazine for science and reason. Subscribing to The Skeptical Inquirer helps us continue to advance science and reason in our society. And I'm so sure that you'll love this magazine that I want you to have a complimentary issue to see what we're all about. To get your sample copy, just call 1-800-634-1610 and mention the Point of Inquiry podcast and ask us for your free copy. We'll get it right out to you, and you can begin enjoying the Skeptical Inquirer. Thank you. Our guest this week is popular online as a spokesperson for skepticism of the paranormal and of pseudoscience, especially as regards to space sciences. Phil Plate is an astronomer at Sonoma State University. His blog and website, badastronomy.com, is one of the most popular of its kind. It's dedicated to clearing up public misconceptions about astronomy and space science, but he's also been exploring more general topics in pseudoscience and the paranormal, and maybe we'll talk about some of those topics today. Phil Plate, welcome to Point of Inquiry. Hi, thanks. Great to be here. You started Bad Astronomy in the early 90s to combat some of the misinformation you saw reported out there about space science. But in in the years since then, you haven't only focused on that. You've branched out to be something as a spokesperson for the scientific outlook in general, and you've treated the paranormal in particular. Right. Uh, I didn't set out to do that, and um, had I, I probably would have done things a lot differently. It was in um, 93, actually, when I wrote up my first web page about uh, misconceptions in astronomy, and that was about standing eggs on end on the first day of spring. And, uh, golly, you know, the web hardly even existed then. It was there, but nobody used it. And then over the years, I just kept adding and adding to it. Now my site, badastronomy.com, is is far larger than I ever expected it to be. And in the meantime, you know, when you you write up something about the Fox Moon Hoax TV show where they claim that the the Apollo moon landings are fake, I wrote up a page about that. And when you you do that, you get some attention. And the next thing I know, I'm doing TV interviews, radio interviews, uh, you know, podcasts now here in the in, in 2006 and 2007 and gosh you know i just never expected this to happen and yeah it, it branched out from just straight astronomy debunking ideas about what the, the misconceptions people have about how things behave in space and what's out there and all that kind of stuff into a far more general uh, uh skepticism in science and, and also just as, as an advocate for science and it it cracks me up to look back and see where I am now and how I got here, it's just sort of a random walk, and it was, it's kind of ridiculous. I get people asking me, how can I do this sort of thing? And I think, well, don't do it the way I did. You'll <laughs> it just seems that the, the, all, of all the possible outcomes, this was probably the least likely, but here I am. Phil, what do you think accounts for the popularity of it? Is it a lot of people are just into astronomy, or a lot of people are into skepticism? It's an interesting mix, the way you present it. Uh, you're bringing skepticism to an audience that hasn't traditionally been a skeptical audience. Well, of course, I'm fabulously charming and a terrific speaker, so that must have something to do with it. But, uh, no, it's, 
it's, it's hard to be objective about it because I'm so immersed in astronomy and I love it so much that it's hard for me to be objective and say, well, maybe it is because people love astronomy. But I think people really do. When I, go, when I give talks about astronomy, when I write about it, um, I can see how people are engaged by it. You show them a picture from Hubble and, and they're hooked, right? And the problem with that is, is a, it's a selection effect. It's a positive reinforcement bias. When I'm given a talk, the people who come to the talk are the people interested in astronomy. People who are more interested in collecting stamps probably aren't going to show up. So it seems to be reinforcing in my mind that people like astronomy. But you'll notice that um, when you go to regular magazines like Time Magazine, Newsweek, whatever, when there is a big astronomical result, they do discuss it. And I think astronomy, more than almost any other science, touches on the grandiose philosophical topics like who, who are we? How did we get here? Where are we going? Uh, plus, it's just, a, it's just pretty. You know, pictures of the moon, pictures of galaxies, pictures of giant gas clouds. These are really pretty, and so people are really engaged by it. They want to know more. And the problem is what they're getting from the media uh, typically is garbage. Uh, these short articles don't really talk about what's really going on. There's no depth to them. It just says, you know, here's the latest finding. And what I try to do, especially when there's a new Hubble picture or a new Chandra or Spitzer picture or something from these space-based observatories, I like to dig a little bit deeper and say, why is this important? Why does this matter? Here's a pretty picture, and the result is interesting, but what does this tell us about ourselves and, and where we are in science? Let's focus on some of the bad astronomy because that's what got the ball rolling with you when you started out. I first met you years ago at a PSYCOP conference in New Mexico when you gave a talk on this sort of stuff. I think it was your first skeptics conference. It was. What are some of the biggest misunderstandings most people have out there about space science? You mentioned the moon hoax, uh, but certainly that's not the only kind of thing. In general, people misunderstand our place in the universe, certain claims about space science. Well, people misunderstand everything about space science, and uh, it's a problem because what you're getting in movies and TV reinforces a lot of these ideas that there is air in space and that you can go from one object to another really quickly. You're getting, getting from one star to the next. It's just a matter of, of saying make it so or engage or, or whatever, <laughs> and you're there one scene later. <laughs> but, but, you know, really, the nearest astronomical object to the Earth is the moon. And on average, it's under 250,000 miles, a quarter of a million miles away. Um, and it still takes three days to get there by rocket. And that's not going to change anytime soon, even with the, the new rockets NASA is designing. It just takes a few days to get to the moon and to be able to go there and stop. If you're, just, if you're going past the moon to continue out onto the, into the solar system, you might, you might take a day to get there. But if you want to get there and slow down and stop and orbit or whatever, it's, it's three days. And that's the nearest object. And the next nearest object is Venus. And that takes weeks, months. A uh, trip to Mars is six months. Uh, to get to Pluto, the New Horizons probe is, is taking a decade. It takes a long time to even get out of our solar system. And to get to the nearest star would take tens of thousands of years. And we have a miserable sense of scale, uh, we humans, because we evolved to, to live in trees and on the plain. And uh, the farthest thing away was the horizon. And our depth perception isn't all that great. And so to, to, to understand the scale of space, you have to use analogies. And even our analogies fail. Because if you say, well, if the moon's an inch away, the nearest star is 100 miles away or whatever it is. And even then, it's like you don't grasp it. And so the sense of scale is probably one of the hardest things to get people to understand. And um, the other problem is not just the media, but our educational system doesn't really teach this 